Um, here's how I operate. Uh, I will, and we have, what does the Fox say? That's on our uh, In the Bonus podcast, which you can download. It goes live right at uh, 5 on the East Coast, 2 on the West Coast. And we play for you a portion of a previous show on Fox Sports Radio or Fox Sports 1, and then we talk about it. But I couldn't let this one, I couldn't let this one go. Um, Nick Wright is Team LeBron, right? Like if LeBron actually needed a media cheerleader, he would have a skirt and pom-poms. And, and he's made no secret about it. He believes he's the greatest athlete he has ever seen. And he, again, Nick, Nick's 38 years old, so he wasn't really old enough to truly feel and understand the gravity of the Jordan era. It's all from spoken word and videos and reading. He's a really bright guy, and he's on uh, First Things First, which I think airs right about now on Fox Sports 1. Um, matter of fact, I, he's actually repped by Clutch Sports. So he's almost like um, he can do damage control. And it's not, I don't, it's not like I think LeBron picks up the phone and says, hey, got my back. But any possible chance of pointing out something negative about Jordan or positive about LeBron, he takes advantage. So I don't know if you guys have seen, there's this internet story that LeBron, excuse me, that Jordan is selling the team because he shorted the GameStop stock to the tune of $500 million. And this is his way of paying back the guy who's actually going to own the Hornets. And they're overpaying really for the team, kind of as a make good, good, good. But Michael Jordan is, he's still making the draft, but he still has last word in the draft selection. And for now, he's still the owner of the Hornets, but eventually that'll go through and he will pocket $2 billion. This is what Nick Wright said about what he calls the failed ownership of the Charlotte Hornets and how it should reflect on Michael Jordan's resume. So uh, Michael Jordan sold the Hornets, made a fortune. Michael's been very good at business uh, from his shoe deals. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, I know you're, you're, you're I can see. Oh, yeah, that. listen, Colin, a lot of, you know, it, it was very unique that, you know, someone bought a pro sports team 20 <laughs> years ago and made a profit. <laughs> I mean, I, I read stories left and right. Yeah, I mean, a guy sold the Arizona Cardinals. He's now on unemployment. Another guy, I mean, it's financially ruinous for many people. But a brilliant businessman like Jordan can make a profit from selling a pro sports team. But go ahead. I interrupted. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a very good point. How, um... I mean, Michael, you know, base, baseball didn't work. The Wizards didn't work. The GM thing didn't work. Um, he's great at basketball, yeah. great at selling shoes, and those are qualities. I mean, there's a lot yeah. about Michael I like. How do you view him now as the Charlotte GM owner mess? Does it, does it ding well, the legacy to you? Okay, so I would like to do a couple things. One is this. Everyone must acknowledge, if they are being honest, that if when Jordan took over the Hornets 15 years ago, he turned them into a dynasty, people would use it as evidence of his greatness. Can we all at least agree to that? Yes. That if they were awesome, they'd be like, oh, look at him, Jay. Everything he touches turns to gold. <laughs> Instead, his ownership tenure of the Hornets was identical to his playing tenure when Scottie Pippen wasn't his teammate. Zero postseason series victories. He won three games, at least, as a Hornets GM and owner is in the playoffs as opposed to only one as a player. But here's my problem. If we would like to judge the greatest player ever purely by, we will evaluate from the day you first set foot on a court to the day you leave the NBA, I'm good with that. But that's never been what it's been for Michael. Michael's had, in some way, because of all the acolytes and sycophants, the best of all worlds. Do we count the entire career? Of course not. He's 6 for 6, not 6 for 15. Do we count the Wizards years? No, those didn't happen. Do we even count the entire championship run? Well, the years he won, we count, but not those middle two years. Was he retired all both of those years? No, he actually came back, got MVP votes, but then lost in the playoffs. So therefore, it doesn't count. Okay, kind of weird, but so be it. But then we also do this, and you just did it in talking about him. And I'm not picking on you. Everyone knows that when they have encountered someone who is, you know, a Jordan true believer, at some point in the argument, you know what gets brought up? Man... It, you know how, it, look at the shoes. 
LeBron's shoes will never sell as well as this. Look at the iconography. Look at the sh- he made the okay, shape. So, cool. so you, you, get, you get the point. Okay? You get the point. He wants to use the whole picture to talk about Jordan and who, in fact, is the greatest. I'm going to do something now which should have been done a long time ago. I'm going to tell people that anyone who uses the Scottie Pippen joining him and that Jordan didn't win anything with Scottie Pippen is the dumbest, least connected to reality moment that there is. And I'm going to say it without diminishing how great Scottie became. Because if you are actually alive, which Nick Wright was not, nor was he of age to understand basketball. And full disclosure, I'm nine years older than Nick Wright. And I'm not even going to point out the, the you know, not, I'm not doing the I played and my dad played and coached and my brother. Like, not, not, not even, don't even need all of that. The reality of it is that the transformation of Scottie Pippen's image and how he played is very similar to Pau Gasol with the Lakers. When Pau Gasol got to the Lakers, it was he's too soft to ever win big with. And if you were actually alive for and actually knew what took place and had a reasonable sense, Scottie Pippen became a great player. Great player. And oh yeah, by the way, Scottie Pippen, whoever peed in his cornflakes because he took the Jordan documentary to be some negative where I thought it was a very realistic perspective. And Jordan said he's the greatest teammate I've ever had. There's no... There's no Jordan without Scottie Pippen, right? All of those things he said were great, but Scottie picked on the, hey, he waited to have back surgery. He was super selfish. All these things were true. The other part is Scottie Pippen was seen as soft. He was seen as the word that means cat, only it isn't, doesn't start with a K. Okay? We all know that word. Not going to use it. That's what he was seen as. Soft. He had the migraine against the, against the Pistons. Did Jordan have to go through a personal evolution? Absolutely. He had to learn to share the basketball. Okay. But like, again, e- even Nick Wright does the constant contradiction. First, he obviously doesn't know anything about Scottie Pippen and, and the Bull. Well, he didn't win any, any series without him. Like, dude, he walked into the worst team in the league. Worst franchise in the league. You know, before LeBron was swept in the playoffs, like, well, he got swept by the Celtics. That's the greatest team, arguably, in modern basketball history. And he had, I think, 44 and 63 in the first two games, and it was a five-game series. But just like he's pointing out the hypocrisy of not telling the whole Jordan story, because the real reality is he did retire, he came back, and he did kind of prove his point with the Wizards. He's doing the same thing with LeBron. Right? Same same thing with LeBron. Like, no mention of the fact that uh, Anthony Davis got hurt and they got, they got boat raced by the, the Suns two years ago in the playoffs. No mention of not making the playoffs two of the years he's with the Lakers. No mention of, hey, not only did he build a super team in Miami, but he destroyed the Cavs by leaving them and destroyed the Raptors by taking Chris Bosh. And they didn't win until they went and got another Hall of Famer in Ray Allen. No mention of that. But what I want to do is make sure the record, because the Scottie Pippen thing has become a real thing, a real discussion. And it's stupid. Scottie Pippen was awesome. But everybody thought he was way too soft to ever win with. And he 